greatest title ever. What if? <laughs> yep. Oh man, oh man. So all right, so I think our first guest is on the line. Let let what if this is her. So what if this is Tanya Clark? Is this Tanya Clark? Yes, hello. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh so uh you know, since we're talking uh, Marvel, I, I guess uh, I, we should go right over your uh, Inhuman stuff, huh? <laughs> oh, Queen Reina, yes. Which we shot in Hawaii, which I highly recommend. <laughs> <laughs> That's good perks, huh? Guy, the, the, the king was um, Queen a- or King Aegon was my was my guy in real life, so uh, that made it even sweeter. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. I know. I know, right? So we just got to hang out in Hawaii for, I guess it was close to a month or something, which was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And how, how was that the first time you guys ever worked together? No. Um, we worked together in a movie called Blackbird. I think it was in, I don't know, some, maybe six years ago or something like that. That was at the okay. Toronto Film Festival. And uh, we're getting ready to work on something else coming up soon. So, but yeah, that that was the first time in a long time. So yeah, um, yeah. So we we often, well, no, I guess we're in, in the, the the movie that we're getting ready to do. We play a couple that's sort of on the edge. This we're very much together, but then the other one we're divorced. So a little bit of this, wow. a little bit of that. It's got to get kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. I mean, no, yeah, I think so too. Sometimes I, I used to do theater before um, coming to LA, and I found that I found that that was even weirder when I was working with someone that I was either intimate with or even just bringing home your character every night. I, I just I felt yeah. like that had always all on my relationship i mean movies or or tv it seems like you know in this case it's not that long it's not that long lived or anything like that so um you know but but a play i mean sometimes you're doing that for like a year or six months or that can um that can that can change things a bit yeah for sure (laughs) just because like it's hard to set it right it's too hard to set the character every single time you walk off stage so you sort of carry a bit of the character with you uh throughout day if you're doing it for that length of time and and so there's yeah there's parts of you that that change perspectives change a little bit and and i don't know ways of carrying yourself sort of change and um i remember that being pretty tricky (laughs) i I (laughs) could imagine sometimes yeah i'm sure the the sometimes the emotions get like you were saying like either uh brought into the character or brought home into real life (laughs) Yeah, like I'm just I'm actually thinking of one character in speci- like very specifically that I was I was it was a very edgy character who just, who just very tough character and um yeah I, I just remember my whole way of being just changing a lot because of that and my whole outlook on him as a result changed on that because I sort of saw it through the character's eyes. You saw, saw, started to see him through the character's eyes, which wouldn't have been the same as what, which, which wasn't through what my what my personal perception would or is that was. So, man, that sounds so dramatic, but it, but it, <laughs> it, it, it you know it, it, it's insidious, right? It is a little insidious, but it, it definitely happens. <laughs> I mean, so I highly recommend never dating an actor if you know you haven't already. <laughs> Now, now when you get a role like that with uh, that's involved in like the world of comic books, do you do you kind of kind of hope like, okay, well maybe I can start doing some comic cons too now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, human and humans didn't last uh, longer than a season, so um, hopefully that would have happened had we had a longer run. But um, but yes, uh, I did go to Comic Con one time for a video game that I did. Uh, um, Oh my god, I'm blanking on the name. I can't believe it. Um, hold on. Dead Space, jeez. Dead Space too. I just shot it. I mean, we did that like 2011. So to go to Comic Con for that, which 
is, if you've never been to Comic Con, is one of the best things ever. <laughs> Bev, have you gone? Oh, I go all the time. Yeah. As a matter of fact, like I'm, I'm going to text my daughters right now. They're both video game junkies, and I'm going to uh-huh. say, "Do you know anything Dead Space?" <laughs> oh, I'm sure they do. I, uh, it's. I, I guess it was a very. I mean, I don't. I don't know much about video games, but it, it, yeah, it was a pretty. It was a very popular one back in the day. Maybe still now. I don't know. And uh, I played Nicole, who is a um, um, just kind of psychotic. Well, very psychotic. Who a ghost. <laughs> so uh, that was fun. <laughs> my my fifteen year old daughter just answered me yes. <laughs> oh really? Hilarious. Yeah. She, the, the two of them. I, I have a 15 year old daughter and a 21 year old daughter, and they're both like, that's that's their world. Like work, school, video games. Yeah, there's this whole thing out there now too, right? I mean, can't. You, I mean, I'm too old for all this stuff, but like, like don't people videotape themselves playing yes. video games, and then they watch that? That's that m- my younger daughter. She sits and watches okay. people on YouTube play video games. I don't understand why or what the big thrill is, but she sits and watches that. She'd rather watch that than watch TV or movies. Oh, I know. I, I, yeah, I, I, I know it. I can't, I can't wrap my brain around the, today's world at all. I, I, I don't even do online banking. I mean, I'm such a grandma, but everything that's changing these days. <laughs> Not that that didn't change a thousand years ago, but still. Um, yeah, I uh, I don't get that either. I mean, I talk to my my friends' kids who have teenagers right now who who yeah, I mean they they'll watch someone going clothes shopping or you know going to the same or or, or people that come into the same boutique every single day and that's that's the show that's the show. I guess it's all rea- what is it reality TV, but even more boring than that it seems. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, right? I, I don't get it. Fine. Yeah. I don't I'm like, don't you want to just play the game instead of watching people yeah. play? She, but so why? Why? What did she say to that? She, because she likes to, like, learn the ins and outs. And, and like, she talks to me and my wife about the, the video game world and these characters. Like, she knows everything about them. And we just look at each other like, oh, my God. Like. Okay, like all right, like you know, I I, I don't know. So I just scratch my head. Is, did she play all night, or do you have to take it? I mean, do you have to take it away from her? Do you trust that she goes to sleep at night, or what? Mm-hmm. Th- thank God she likes to sleep. So I that I don't have to worry about that. She does like to sleep. So, but <laughs> but when she like has whatever open time, it's something involving video games. She's either watching people play or she's playing or she's drawing video game characters. Yeah. I mean, she's a typical teenager in 2019, right? That's what happens. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. And I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that because when I was that age, like I was out, you know, roaming the streets and doing things I shouldn't be. So I'm, 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 yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Who, who are we to criticize, right? Who are we to criticize that? I guess. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I just don't. I just don't get it. Just don't get it. <laughs> but um, something something else you do. I saw uh, beside uh, the acting is this whole art sculpting thing that is just like amazing pieces of like these glass lights that you do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's called liquid light, and um, I've been doing that for about about twelve years now, I guess. Okay. And it started off by me needing a chandelier or some sort of a light fixture uh, in my apartment in Venice. And uh, I had an idea of what I wanted to do. And then it kind of just came together after that. It was very serendipitous in the, in the way that, like, I was like, I want it with, because um, I was living right by the water. And my father is a political activist and an environmental activist with an emphasis on water. So we grew up around that conversation, uh, my brother and I, our our entire lives. So, yeah, and also a little bit of it was I just moved from New York City and taking a little bit of the city with me to 
to LA. So I, I, something industrial that I wanted, but I also wanted to combine it with, you know, actual water, li- like something that resembled liquid coming out of the faucets. And yeah. um, I somehow just pieced this thing together and, uh, I mean, it was like it was like I'd meet some guy at a party and he'd say, "Oh, I know how to wire this," and I'd be like, "Really? Because this is what I have as a outline." And you know, I'd buy him dinner and he would wire my thing, and then you know, I, I just it was small little you know steps like that. But um, and the next thing I knew, I was um, God, I wish my whole life was like this, like just like oh, and then oops, and then oh, and then oh, and but it's not. And I was at uh, a gallery in in L.A. and uh, they had all these crazy in, at Bergamot Station in Santa Monica. But they had um, all these chandeliers made out of strange objects. And I said to the lady working there, "So weird! I just made something that reminds me of this." And I had a picture on my phone, and she said, "Well, bring it in. We'll sell it," which had never occurred to me before. So anyway, wow. next thing you know. I brought it in and it just kind of launched from there. It was very, um, yeah, it was very, I guess for lack of a better word, it was kind of organic, the whole thing. And it just, next thing you know, I was, I'm, I'm now making them, <laughs> you know, and awesome. selling them and in galleries and stuff. And it's, it's, it's great because, because it, I need, a, I feel like I need a lot of, you know, quiet alone cave time. And, uh, <laughs> so I just can go into my little cave world and uh, and and make things and so be creative and not sort of more out in the world and then the acting plays that other side of me so it's a balance I think. Now, now when you go into the cave and you start uh, sculpting these, uh, are you listening to music? No, nothing. Wow. No, I know. I sometimes think, why don't I listen to music or a podcast or something? And I don't know. It's just, it, it, it's sort of like it, it's a place for the, my thoughts to just sort of unwind. Sometimes it's like a hamster in a wheel. Like it's just the same stupid thought. Sometimes if I'm really angry about something, I just have that same thought that goes over and over, over and over and over and over. I play that thought over and over and over my head or the incident. But eventually it goes away. And I think it's it's a weird outlet. But, yeah, it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't listen to anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Which is gonna say when I'm driving, I listen to music all the time, or I listen to podcasts and stuff. But when I'm just, it's just me doing my thing. It's quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See the silence yeah. driving me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it does drive me a little nuts. That's why I'm saying like the hamster in the wheel thing happened, but. Yeah. I think yeah. it also it allows the hamster to be kind of set free eventually too, you know. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Driver X, what a movie! Yeah. Oh, I, I did you like it? I, you know what, like when uh, when when Tim the PR guy first told me about this over the holidays, he was like, I, I, "I'm so excited to work on this movie." He's like, it, "It's just." So like what's going on in, in the world of entertainment right now in real life. He's like, I can relate to it. So many people are going to be able to relate to it. And he was telling me, I'm like, Oh my, I, I got I to gotta see this. So I finally, he said, he sent me over to thing to watch it. I sat and watched it today. And I'm like, Oh yeah, this is my world. <laughs> this is, I've been there. I, I, I did the Uber thing for a minute and wow. Yeah. It, it's, right. it's, I was, it's so real life. I, I agree. And I think that it's Henry's character not Henry, uh, Patrick's character rather, is representative of so many people today um, yeah. that have to go out and do something that they didn't expect that they had to do, you know, and and the difference is that he has the gumption to actually get up and, and go and do something that he doesn't necessarily self-identify with, but he needs to go get a job and he does, right? And, yeah. um, and I think that, you know, he, he figures out how to transition, uh, and to re-identify himself, and and he finds joy and value and integrity in that. And I think that I, I guess I just really think that if you can find peace in the crossroads, you know, that you're you're capable of anything, and that change as a result will happen. I think it's when you we get stuck in like this isn't happening. I hate this. This isn't happening. And I refuse it. I refuse it. That it just sticks. It sticks. It sticks. 
I think it's um I, I really I, I really like the movie too because it is a it is a lesson and kind of just you know accept where you are and it's yeah. if you accept where you are things eventually will change. I remember when I was in New York, I, I I eventually got my apartment after ten years of being in the same place. I got it exactly the way I wanted it, and somebody said to me, "Yeah, okay, so you'll probably move now." I'm like, "Why? I just got my apartment." <laughs> Exactly the way I want it. No, and no word of a lie. I, I I'm gone in six months, which was the last thing in the world I would have expected. But you know, I I think there's something to be said about that, about uh, putting your best foot forward, finding the joy in it, finding integrity in in whatever it is, and uh, be open to the next thing. You know, yeah. not complacent. Just um. Just finding some acceptance with it, though, you know, right. that's part of it, but that it's also impermeable, too, you know? Yeah, and, and people really got to watch this movie because it really, it's really what's going on in, in the world, and it really is the world. It's not even just our country. It's the world today, like, where people yeah. like uh, like the character Len- Leonard, who, you know, he had this business for 25 years, and now he's faced with, the, like, you know, he's got to find a job. Absolutely. and. Yeah, it's kind of hard for a person who's been their own boss for 25 years to have to go work for the man, the quote unquote man now, or find a real yeah. job somewhere. And yeah, and then you got to resort to being that Uber guy, that driver X. And uh, it's it's like the things he's experiencing, it makes you realize too, like people are out of their minds. Like there's just wackos out there. <laughs> I know what happens in the car stays in the car and all that, right? <laughs> <sighs> I t- like w- when I was doing it, like it, it literally, for, and it's funny because I told my co-host Nick, who's very quiet over there, I said, you know, when I did it, like this guy, he's got all these girls hitting on him. I said, I didn't have one girl hit on me. I think I had one gay guy hit on me, and that was about it. But it was just like, it, it was just like weirdos. A lot, a lot of dealing with drunks, which you know they show in in the movie and. It's just it, it's a it's an experience, man. <laughs> it really is an experience. What's the craziest thing that's happened to you? What's that? What's the craziest thing that happened to you in the Uber? Uh, I used to use my wife's minivan so I can get more people in there, and mm-hmm. taking ten drunks to an Eagles football game might have been about it. And they were like laying on the floor, like to squeeze in. That was about it. Like it didn't nothing crazy, crazy. But did you ever feel threatened, or you know? The... No, I don't... never felt threatened. But but I did feel like at one point there was a like he he does a ride with uh, some people, and the girl says to him, "Well, can I tip you on the app?" And oh. we're like, "No." She's like, "You're getting four dollars. Why are you doing it?" And I had situations like that quite a few times, and I'm like saying to myself, "Why am I doing this?" And oh my god, that's literally... exactly what he says too. The the, the writer he said that exa- that that scenario uh, ver- happened verbatim, and yeah. it really made him think about what he was yeah. doing as well. That's why I stopped doing it. That's why I stopped doing it. <laughs> it was it was so many new with the way. Like, so... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. It was New Year's Eve like three or four years ago, and, and you know they kept texting you and emailing you. It's going to be the biggest night of the year. Get out there and make money. I'm like, all right. And I didn't. I usually did like mornings and afternoons, and I went out at night. I didn't want to deal with the drunks, and I went out at night, and it was like, yeah, like four hours here, or five hours here, and I, I'm like, what am I doing? And I'm like, screw this, and I went home. I didn't do it again. What? I- on a, on a night like that, I mean, don't they don't they jack up the price over at, at peak times or? They do. What happened though is, that, and this would happen a lot, and it used to drive me nuts. Like I live outside of Philadelphia in the suburbs, which is great because if you're getting runs like down into Philly, you'll get a nice little run. But then once you get into Philly, yeah. you're stuck in Center City, Philly, and right. you're getting these two, three, four, five hour runs and you're stuck in traffic and New Year's Eve, it was complete traffic and you were stuck in traffic forever. And I was just like, nah, this is after four hours of being sitting in traffic. I'm like, nah, I'm going home. I'm wasting my time. Oh, well, that's good. You might, you're happy, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
But it reminded me, because you even said, it, it, you kept asking, well, how much did you make? How much did you make? And I was like, yep, that was my wife. That was my wife. And then you got to sit there and put your head down and be like, I made $37. It's like, come on, really? <laughs> I know. I know. Tough, though, right? I, <laughs> I, and, and I remember talking to one Uber driver, though, I guess a couple of years ago, who said that he loved it because he would go away, you know, with his uh, wife's family, and he'd say he had to work. <laughs> he was just like, no matter where he was, you know, he'd just get in his car and just start working because he could at least avoid, you know, his family life, I guess. <laughs> Depends on why you're doing it, too, right? Oh. For him, it worked out. For that, for the opposite reason. It's but fine. yeah, I know. I I think that uh, I think that's got to be really, yeah, really tough and and hilarious and and yeah, uh, uh, yeah, just <laughs> bizarre <laughs> too. Just, just scary too because it's also your car, right? Like, I mean, yeah, I don't know, kind of gross. Yeah, could be. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like when you got people so like I, yeah, like throw want to throw up or and stuff like that. Yeah, no, no, thank you. So did you have to clean your car after every shift? Um, did you clean it inside, like wipe down stuff, or were you doing nah, whatever? Yeah, yeah, sometimes, sometimes, yes, <laughs> all the time, no. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah but I mean, you got the chance to really show. Too, where you know he's showing not only the, the the Uber driver, but the husband who's trying to provide for his family. But you're showing the wife who's frustrated because here's the husband who's now an Uber driver. Well, yeah. Also, someone who is very much um, kind of living in denial, in, in, in certainly at the beginning too, that things are going to change with his business. That is obsolete <laughs> you know and yeah. i think that that in and of itself is very frustrating like i get it like i get the sense of you know this loss of self and then a little bit of a midlife crisis happening and all that and all the rest and um but at the same time it's, i think it's very scary you know it's uh, one of the top facts a woman a woman mentioned uh don who's my character's obsession with food about like dieting and fasting and whatever and 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 if I thought that that came from you know when when you when you feel like you when your world is sort of turned upside down and and very unstable food is this one thing that you do have control over and I, and it was really interesting because I never really thought of it that way but I think that is absolutely true like I I just had a baby this year and and um oh, yes. Thank you. And uh, a pediatrician had mentioned that, like, you know, there's two things that a, a, a baby has control over, you know, what they eat or like how much they eat and if they eat. And to a certain extent, you know, if and when they go to the bathroom, to a certain extent. Um, but that's where you've got to watch, like, you know, if a baby isn't, isn't eating, there's sometimes a reason why, there's a reason why, right? And it could be like a punishment thing or like an attention thing. And the same thing with the going to the bathroom. That's where like, you know, the, the constipation comes into play. And, and uh, anyway, but this is a long discussion about that, but, but you know, jump, jumping forward, like into, you know, like a woman in her forties, it still holds true. I mean, right. Like that is something we do have control over is, uh, is, uh, is when and where and if and 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 how much we we decide to put in our bodies and and I to a certain extent can relate to that to like when everything feels so out of control that there are certain things you can obsess about that the things that you do have control over become hyper important you know and, and so I think that there is uh, elements of dawn that are reflected in that that side you know. I, I want to um, applaud you for being able to control what you put in your body because me as a 40 something year old male, I have no control. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, it depends on the time. <laughs> but I understand the mentality though. You know what I mean? I understand that the, the, I, I understand that, that, that 
desire to control, whether I am able to control it or not, is an entirely different conversation. But, um, but I think for John, that is that is what in a way. Okay. There you go. All right. <laughs> Digital phone calls. <laughs> All right, so um, how about uh, anything else you're working on that's getting ready to come out that uh, we can check you out in? Um, I, well, yeah, right now I'm um, – well, I mean, I guess what's, what's coming out soon is uh, I, a show or a movie, rather, called Hot Wired in Suburbia on Netflix. But what but what's um what I'm working on right now is another movie with Henry, the director and writer oh, cool. and driver. And uh him and my guy and my baby Ari actually are working on a project um about a couple that come from very different backgrounds, uh, but that are very much in love and that have a baby. And after the two two thousand and sixteen elections their relationship becomes incredibly part of them hmm. like, you know yeah and so what what happens with the whole uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah well that should be so interesting you know, yeah it becomes basically like the couple and the baby become basically a microcosm for you know society today right um, so, so to make it even more complicated though you have now your baby in, in the picture I know, I know, <laughs> I know, but why not, right? Start again. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, it, it, family time. There you go. It's bonding time. There you go. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, you got to spend as much time as, uh, together as possible. Clearly. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Cool. So, I'm all right, so, so glad where's... you liked the movie. I did. I, I loved it. I really did. I was I'm so happy I got to to see it and a chance to talk to you about it. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Now, where should we send everybody to go to check it out? Well, it's not out yet. We're still we're still working on it right now. So uh, okay. we will keep it to you and and let you know when that comes out. There you go. Yeah, and how about you? Where, 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 where should we send everybody to find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at, oh my God, I don't even know what my handle is on this. I'm not, I'm not so into this stuff as much. Um, uh, where am I? I think it's Tanya Clark 22, I think. T-A-N-Y-A-C-L-A-R-K-E uh, 22. Yeah, no, 222 actually. Tanya Clark 222. Um, or my lights are at liquidlightsite, S-I-T-E, dot com. Awesome. Tanya, this was a pleasure <laughs> talking to you. Thanks again so much, and I uh, look forward to talking to you again. And hopefully we'll see you at a comic con Yes, I hope so, too. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Take care. All right, there she goes. Tanya Clark, check her out, Driver X. Actually, there's a website for the movie. Let me just double check here. DriverXMovie.com. Check it out. Especially all you Uber drivers out there. I need to send it out to uh, to my buddies. I got a few Uber driver friends out there. They got to see this movie. <laughs> so I got 